All right, now what I want to do is talk about something called resistance. To illustrate this concept, I'm going to go over something called a statistical applet. All right, what I'm going to do is create a set of points, just plotting points here on the, on the screen, basically drawing a dot plot. Remember those? And see how the data is pretty tightly bunched, and the mean and the median are the exact same value. The reason the mean and the median are the exact same value is because this data is perfectly symmetric. So what we conclude here, based on this little experiment, is that when you have symmetric data, the mean and the median are the same. Now watch what happens as I make this data more skewed to the right. As the data becomes more skewed to the right, what is the relationship between the mean and the median? Means higher. Yeah, the mean is bigger than the median when you have skewed to the right data. That should feel logical because these observations are large relative to the majority of the data. And so these few observations are causing the mean to get bigger because I'm adding larger values whereas the median doesn't really care about the actual size of this observation. All the median cares about is its location. So whether this point is here or, I thought I could, gra I can grab and move them. In fact, I, let me trash that one. Or way over here, the median doesn't care. See how the median isn't changing as this observation moves? But the mean is, see that? Because the median is based on location, not actual value. The mean is based on actual value. All right. Now what I'm going to do is create how can I, a skewed right a skewed left distribution. Just move all these values over here, and just. Pay attention as these data values move to what's happening to the mean and the median. Now, if I asked you to describe the shape of this distribution, what would you say? Skewed left. Yeah, you'd probably say skewed to the left. And how's the relationship between the mean and the median here? <laughs> yeah, the median is bigger than the median, or put another way, the mean is smaller than the median. And the reason is similar to what we just gave for skewed right. These observations here are causing are substantially smaller than the majority and causing the mean to shrink, whereas the median, all we care about is position. So now what I want to do is, let me refresh the screen and start over. I'll go 0 to 100. I'm going to just create another data set here. This time I'll make it smallish. Again, this is perfectly symmetric data, so the mean and the median are the same. And what I'm going to do is add one more observation. I'm just going to put it there. And what I want you to do is watch the mean and watch the median as I move this data value. I'm sliding the data value to the right. What's happening to the mean? What's happening to the median? So nothing's happening to the median. Nothing's happening to the median, and <coughs> yeah, the mean is getting substantially larger. Would you call this observation strange relative to the rest of the data? Unusual, in other words. Yeah, this is strange relative to the rest of the data. 
it doesn't match up. And we see that this value does not impact the value of the median at all, but it does impact the value of the mean. In other words, does a measure of central tendency of 47 better is that better representative of what the middle is, or is 51.8 a better measure of central tendency? Probably the median, because it's more about what the middle is. All right, so the word that we use to describe this property is resistance. The median is resistant to extreme observations, while the mean is not. If you have an extreme observation in the data set, the mean's value is going to be impacted, whereas the median's value will not be impacted. And in fact, the more observation, or sorry, the fewer observations there are to offset that extreme observation, the bigger the difference between the mean and the median is going to become. And you can see that based on the sliding scale down here. So what we're saying is the median is resistant to extreme observations. The mean is not resistant. So if you have an extreme observation in the data set, which measure of central tendency should you report if you don't want to deceive? The median, the resistant one. Absolutely. So again, a numerical summary of a data is said to be resistant if extreme values, very large or very small, relative to the data, do not affect its value substantially. So the median is resistant, the mean is not resistant. So this visually uh, explains what we just saw with the applet. When you have skewed left data, in general, the mean is less than the median. When you have symmetric data, the mean is the same as the median. When you have skewed right data, the mean is bigger than the median. I said, in general, is this a hard and fast rule? No, it is not. There can be data that's skewed to the right, and yet the mean is less than the median. It can happen. It typically happens with discrete data, if it's going to happen, not continuous data. So don't use this as a hard and fast rule. Uh, if you're going to be asked from now on to describe the shape of a distribution, I'll ask that you not only draw, give me a visual representation of the data via something like a histogram or a stem and leaf plot, also we'll ask for a numeric <coughs> summary that confirms your results. But don't use one without the other when asked to describe the shape of the distribution going forward. So here's some data that represents the asking price of homes for sale in Lincoln, Nebraska. Seventy-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-five, all the way up to three forty-nine nine hundred. What we're going to be doing in this problem is asking you to describe the shape of the distribution. So this is going to be a two-step process. One, draw a histogram of the data. Two, compute the mean and median and compare them. And then, based on those two results, conjecture the shape of the distribution. So for starters, if we computed the mean asking price, we'd get 168,320. And we, I mean, I wouldn't ask you to compute the mean of that data by hand. That would be cruel and unusual punishment. We would just enter that data into our calculator and have it spit out the mean and also the median. Now, the mean, look at the mean versus the median. And what do you notice? That's yeah, 20 grand more for the mean over the median. So the mean is bigger than the median. When the mean is bigger than the median, we typically say that the distribution is skewed right. right. <laughs> skewed right. So we would conjecture that the data skewed or the distribution skewed right because the mean's bigger than the median. 
We would draw a histogram to verify that. What is what shape does this histogram appear to have? Skewed right. Skewed right. And so the numeric summary jives with the graphical summary, and we feel pretty good about saying that the distribution is skewed right. So if I ask you, here's some data to describe the shape of the distribution, you're going to draw a histogram and you're going to compute the mean and median. Here you would say the data is skewed right because the mean's bigger than the median and the right tail in the distribution is substantially longer than the left tail. That would be a good answer. We'll find out down the road why we care so much about distribution shape. Stay tuned. One other thing that I could ask is which measure of central tendency is better representative of the measure of center, the mean or the median? Probably the median because the data is skewed right. We know that what the mean is doing in skewed right data is probably a little bit inflated because of these large observations over here. Okay, so this is where you have to be careful with reports. If an average is reported, you can convey two different messages. Here we could say the average asking price of a home in Lincoln, Nebraska is $168,000. Isn't that great? If you're trying to pump up the housing market in Lincoln, Nebraska, if you want to be a wet blanket, you would say, no, the average price is $148,000. Things are terrible. And you'd both be right. And so if you hear average asking price of a home, you need to be skeptical because you don't know which they're talking about. All right. The media is getting better about that. Uh, typically with ha uh, housing prices, they do talk about medians. When they talk about incomes, they talk about median income because both of those variables are highly skewed to the, to the right. 